Hello there and good morning. Now it may be the festive season, but the Brexit games continue. The leader of the House of Commons, Andrea Leadsom, says that a no-deal Brexit is the legal fallback position and that the only way you avoid it is to vote for Theresa May's deal or find another deal. In an interview with The Telegraph, she also said that the government will press on with preparations for leaving the EU without a deal and that Parliament would be unable to stop that happening. Now, The Telegraph also reports that the chairman of the Tory party 1922 committee, Sir Graham Brady, last week warned the PM that she should sack the next minister that publicly steps out of line over Brexit. But Amber Rudd, the Work and Pension Secretary, as well as David Gork, the Justice Secretary, have both recently warned against the No Deal option, which effectively trashes their own collective cabinet position on Brexit. Let's see some sackings. As the former Tory Chancellor Lord Lamont said, it is foolish to rule out what is in effect your only plan B, and that is what the WTO option is. And there are also the likes of the Conservative MPs Anna Soubry and Nick Bowles who have threatened to resign the Tory whip and vote against it should the No Deal option become government policy. In response, the Lib Dem MP Leila Moran said that Parliament can stop and will stop a No Deal Brexit. Now, if Parliament is going to vote down the deal that Theresa May came back from Brussels with, and I fervently hope they do, to remove no deal from the table, it would have to force the government into a plan C. Now, what would that be? Further, by ditching WTO, they would actually be scrapping Brexit itself. The trouble is that Parliament would then be facing a situation where we will be leaving on WTO terms on the 29th of March 2019 cut-off date whatever changes they make to domestic UK legislation because EU legislation will also force us out with no deal on that date, bar three things, and each of these three things would almost certainly require a sea change in government policy to achieve it. The first is that the UK miraculously forges a new deal with the EU before the cut-off date. Now, realistically, what are the chances of that? This has also been ruled out by Theresa May. It's her deal or no deal. The second is that we could ask Brussels for an extension to the Article 50 negotiating period to give time to forge a new plan. But as I've pointed out many times before, that requires the unanimous agreement across the whole EU27 and that may not be easy to obtain, if at all, especially given the tightness of time. And it's also ruled out by the PM anyway. The third is that the UK MPs vote to revoke the Article 50 letter and stop Brexit entirely, but once again ruled out by Mrs May. And for those who think we should just slot in a sort of quickie referendum before the cut-off date, I would say that would be impossible to do properly within the time frame, and it would smack of banana republic. So, Parliament having ditched the only deal on the table as well as the WTO Plan B, would see that there is no time for a new deal or a referendum, so would be desperate to extend Article 50 or, as the very last choice, stop Brexit completely. This is the sort of scenario I see developing in the coming weeks after Christmas. But how do you think it will pan out? Please leave a comment below and thank you for watching.